stand my friend. Well, let's, um, let's just lift our hands for a moment and thank Jesus for what he's already provided. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the stripes that Jesus took on his back. We thank you for being willing to sacrifice your son. Lord, he was the only one that could do that. He had to be born of a virgin, so he didn't have the sin nature. And Father, we're, we're so thankful for that. We're thankful that you not only saved us, but you healed us. And today we receive and appropriate the healing, a virtue of Jesus, the peace of mind, everything, Lord, that you bought and paid for on the cross. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. You know, one, one of the things that you don't hear a lot of people teach on, and I'm not going to be teaching on this today, but one of the um, benefits of the atonement, uh, which, which is what Jesus paid for on the cross for us, is that the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Yes? So that includes peace of mind, that includes healing of every, of, a bro of broken hearts, that includes every kind of a freedom from every kind of torment, mental torment. Are, are you hearing me? It uh, doesn't matter what people label, schizophrenia, bipolar, whatever name you want to put on it, there's a name that's above that name. It's the name of Jesus. And I'm not just saying that name is above that name. It is. But the reason it is is because Jesus, pay, Jesus paid the price for every, you know, every stigma or every prognosis or diagnosis that any doctor could put on you. And what happens is, is, is you, you, uh, you run into people who, you know, have, they, they, they have this uh, label put on them, they're bipolar or they're, you know, they have mental illness or, you know, so, something, you know, they're schizo have, they're sch have schizophrenia. You know, don't accept that. Don't accept that as the final. Jesus paid, what did, what did Jesus pay the price for? Did he not pay the, the, cha, the chastisement? Jesus was chastised for our peace. And it's not peace to have mental torment. It's not peace to be bipolar. It's not peace to have, um, to have dementia or um, or. or you know, Alzheimer's or anything else like that. How many of you know, that Je but Jesus paid the price. Why, why, why don't we just be real bold and, and appropriate healing for people, for ourselves, but also people who are struggling with that? Yes. Amen. Amen. He was chastised for a reason, for our peace. And any time the enemy is trying to take us out of peace, Jesus has already paid the price. Amen? Okay, well, let me tell you a funny. <clears throat> I shared this with a, actually this message that I, I shared yesterday with the alumni on a Zoom meeting. So if you, if you were on that meeting, you'll get, it, you'll get a double dose of the Holy Ghost. Because I'm, I'm in agreement with what the Lord spoke to Daniel. There's more for us today. And, and I'm telling you, God's got more for you more for you than just getting by. Amen? So this is called a sharp airline ticket agent. So an award should go to the United Airlines gate agent in New York for being smart and funny while making her point. And when confronted with a passenger who probably deserved to fly cargo. <laughs> for all of you out there who've had to deal with an irate customer, this one's for you. A crowded United Airlines flight was canceled, and a single agent was rebooking a long line of inconvenienced tra inconvenience travelers. If that ever happens to you, just get on the phone and rebook, okay? But anyway, suddenly an angry passenger pushed his way to the desk, slapped his ticket on the counter, and he said, I have to be on this flight, and it has to be first class. The agent kindly responded, well, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy to try to help you, but you'll have to 
get in the back of the line, and when it's your turn, I'll, I'm sure we'll be able to work something out. But the passenger was unimpressed. He asked loudly so that the passengers behind him could hear, do you have any idea who I am? Without hesitating, the agent smiled, picked up her public address microphone, and said, may I have your attention, please? She began, her voice clearly heard throughout the terminal. We have, we have a passenger here at gate 14 who doesn't know who he is. <laughs> if anyone can help him with, with his identity, please come quickly to gate 14. With the folks behind this man in line now laughing hysterically, he walked sheepishly back to the back of the line to wait his turn. Moral of the story is you, you want to be nice to airline ticket agents. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So I want to read from Genesis 8, 22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Everybody say seed time and harvest. That's the title of my message today, except I want to call it like this, a Seed, Time, Harvest. Everybody say Seed, seed. Time, Harvest. <clears throat> I want to break my message up into these three points because for, for, for predominantly I'm speaking to people who know the word who, know, who, who believe that by Jesus' stripes you were healed. Um, one, of, one of the Lord's names is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, right? Okay, think about this for a minute. Okay, anytime the Lord reveals his name to us, and you know, he reveals it in several di different places, he's, you know, Je Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, Je uh, Jehovah Sid Canoe, the Lord our righteousness, um, you know, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Anytime God reveals his name to us, that's a measure of his character. I used to read, or, or when I was reading in the Bible and, and seeing, you know, in the, in the book of Revelation, how they're singing, holy, 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 24-7. I was thinking, man, that is boring. <laughs> That's boring, but then I got and then I got this insight. Every every holy is another revelation of a dimension of his character. It's like holy, and then holy, and then holy, right? Yeah. And so, but when when he reveals to us in his word his name, okay, his will can never violate his name or his nature. See, his name is a picture of his nature. And his will for our lives will never be outside of his nature. And so it's a done deal that healing is the will of God for you. Yes? Because it's not... Jesus was the express image of the Father. He said in John 14, that's in Hebrews chapter 1... In, in uh, John 14, 9, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then Jesus went about doing good, Acts 10, 38, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. That was the express image of the Father. But listen, guys, um, and this isn't really part of my message. It's just something that I've had in my heart to share. Is that, is that God, his nature, uh, his, his name reveals his a nature and character and his will will never, his will for your life will never go counter to that. Whenever you see his, if he's, if he's the Lord, uh, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord your provider, I'm, I'm going to line up with that and I'm going to receive his provision. Amen? So, but again, I'm, I'm, by and large, we're talking to people that know something about the will of God Okay, but I, so I want to just talk about the process of receiving healing and uh, for, for people who are more mature believers. Now, look, un, people who are 
either unbelievers or unbelieving believers, they can receive healing through the gifts of the Spirit or through your faith and your prayers, okay? But by and large, um, we're, gonna re- we're gonna be receiving uh, fr- from the Lord through His Word, yes? And so, so here, he said there's, until the Lord, till the Lord returns, I mean, until, while, while the earth remains, okay? It's gonna be seed, time, harvest. So I wanna break up my message in these three phases. First of all, seed. And here's my question for you. Have you sown, when it, in regards to healing, have you sown the seed of God's word in your heart that he has revealed to you concerning healing, the harvest of healing in your life? Have you sown that word in your heart? God's word is a huge seed bag that contains seed that will produce a harvest for every imaginable thing uh, that you could ever experience in life, any need you ever have. God created the whole uh, universe and then the earth and then he created man. He already created the supply before there was ever a need, yes? Now, can you imagine a farmer and I'm, I think I've heard Andrew use this example before, but I'll nick it off of him. Can, can you imagine a farmer praying for a harvest without planting seed in the ground necessary to produce that harvest? Wouldn't that be kind of ridiculous? Can you imagine a gardener praying for, how many of you ever grown a garden? Okay, can you imagine a gardener praying for tomatoes? Man, my grandparents up in Iowa had the best, biggest, most juicy tomatoes, man. They were awesome. And, but can you imagine a gardener praying for tomatoes when all that he or she has planted is squash? Can you imagine that? Yet so many people come forward for prayer or call the prayer line and cannot answer this question. What scripture verse are you standing on as the basis for your prayer being answered? And I'm, I've been in ministry over 40 years, and 40 to 50% of anybody that ever comes forward for anything, healing, doesn't matter, prosperity, a need being met in their life, whatever, it, usually approximately 50% of people that come forward for prayer cannot tell me the answer to that question and yet they're praying for a harvest. Now, I'll pray in faith because I've got a revelation that by his stripes, that what Jesus did for them, that they'll, that they'll be healed or just release the gifts of the Spirit and they can receive healing through the gifts of the Spirit. Primarily, it's my faith. It's their point of contact. They believe that I believe, okay? But they can't stay healed like that. The enemy, Jesus said in Matthew 12, he's coming back. He's gonna check and see whether that person is empty or not. Empty of what? Empty of the word. And so guys, and I know this is very, very elementary, okay? But I, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir to help you help other people. We don't need to be laying hands on, on people so suddenly. Just ask them, what scripture are you standing on that you want me to agree with you in prayer about? If they haven't planted the seed, then it's gonna be the seed that's already been planted in my heart that gets them healed. It, it, guys, this is how it works. It's, you gotta get the seed planted. Yeah? Yes. And yeah, God will answer prayer, but the reason he answers prayer is because whoever's doing the praying has seed planted in their heart about what they're praying. Have you even asked that question? And there's so many times I'll ask people, man, and, you know, and, and it's not that I won't pray for them, but then I'll pray, God, give them a revelation of the word of God. I, I remember uh, Barry Bennett when he was going through his, his cancer battle, um, Janice and I went over, and I know, you know Daniel and so, so many of us you know, reached out to Barry, so I'm not 
taking any credit for Barry's healing, okay? I'm just saying we cared about him, right? We reached out to him. We didn't just, you know, leave him. We went over and visited him at his house, and, and then Janice would text Betty Kay, and I would call Barry, um, you know, maybe once a week, every other week, something like that, and, uh, and he would tell me, he said, Greg, you know, I'm, uh, it, it, there were times when he said, I'm just not myself, and he said, with, with all these treatments and everything, he said, I, I really, really, it really encourages me that you called today. And, um, but, that, but what I did is I, I did exactly what I'm telling you. I said, Barry, uh, what scripture are you standing on? What, what has God quickened to your heart? Because I want to get in agreement with that. He gave me three verses, but one of them was really kind of the main verse that God quickened to him that brought healing to his body. It was Romans uh, 8 and verse 11. But there were some other verses. I think it was Romans 8, 2 was another one, but Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So, and I just, we, I was agreeing with that resurrection life and, and coming against that cancer death and his, that was trying to, uh, you know, bring death to his body and speak in life. But the bottom line is this, guys. God had quickened that verse to Barry, and that seed was planted in his heart, and then he had to water it, and certainly other people can get in agreement with him to help water it and encourage it so the seed isn't dug up. If the seed stays in the ground of the heart, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hatch off and, 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 and bring a harvest. So this is my question to you, first of all. How many of you need healing in your bodies right now? How many of you need healing in your bodies? All right. I, I'm not asking you to answer me. I'm asking you to answer yourself. What scripture, what seed of God's word has God made alive to you? And have you meditated on that to the point that then you see yourself, instead of seeing yourself like, when, when, when the doctors told me I had cancer, the first vision I had of what was myself in a casket and all of my family coming to my funeral and getting saved. What a noble thought. <laughs> but then the Lord told me, he said, son, you're not the sacrifice <laughs> that brought their salvation. I said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you get a, you know, if you have the wrong seed planted in your heart, you're going you're gonna to get a vision that's different and, and you're going to get a harvest that's different. And so I know this is very, very elementary, guys, but even what you guys know that Barry Bennett is like the, he's like the quintessential teacher. I mean, he's like the teacher of teachers. Would you agree? Okay. But the teacher of teachers still had responsibility to what, what word, what part of the word has God quickened in your heart? What have you planted in your heart? Now, you know, it's different for every battle. You, now sometimes the Lord will give you, use the same scripture, but, you know, it's usually my experience is God's, he doesn't want you dependent on one verse or on one method or, you know, and so he's going to, he wants you dependent on him. And as you're seeking him, what is he quickening to your heart? And I really want to encourage you. I know I, I, I mean, I'm almost apologetic about, about you know, being so elementary and simple. But guys, this is where so many people miss it. Is there, they, we, you know, we agree that God generally wants to heal. But what seed have you planted in your heart that's going to bring the harvest of the prayer? And have you taken the time? I mean, look, just, just, I just looked up in the Strong's Concordance. Look, if you've got a Cruden's Concordance, throw it away. That's for the crude. If you've got a Young's Concordance, throw that away. That's for the young. Get a Strong's Concordance. Okay, I've got one in my electronic Bible. And, and I just, I mean, but I, I, had, and I had one of those old big Strong's Concordances. And I looked through the Word and found Scriptures. And that's where we 
put together our book, Scriptures to Live By, back there. But we quoted, we found 70 scriptures um, when Michael was so sick. Uh, Michael is Andrew's daily television producer. He produces his daily program. He produces my program as well. And, but he was so sick and the doctors didn't give him hope to ever walk again. And we, were, we, we found 70 scriptures, nothing magical about the number. But we just quoted those over Michael. And there, but then after a period of time, one of them leapt off the page into our hearts. We got that, we got that word planted in our hearts. Psalm 119, 89, 90, it was one of the integrity of God's word scriptures. And that category uh, said, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness is unto Michael and his generation. And that, that word, guys, quickened in our hearts. And then Janice had a vision of Michael running around the corner saying, mama, mama, mama. He couldn't even crawl at 17 months old. But then he crawled a month later, and then he walked, and then, and then he ran, and he ran faster than his older, older brother. He needed to. But, you know, the bottom line is, is it got, God, we took the time. We took the time, guys. And I, we knew God, it was God's will to heal, but we took the time to get the seed of God's word planted in our hearts so that we could have the harvest that Jesus provided. Are, are y'all tracking with me? So 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, well, his word is his will, right? So we could say if we ask anything according to his word, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we, whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions we, we've asked of him. Well, look, the, the converse is true too. If you don't ask according to his word or according to his will, you're not, he doesn't hear you. And so we need to be asking, we, may, we need to make sure our prayers are based or founded in the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so if you, don't, if you, if you take time to find out God's will from his word and plant that word in his heart, you, you can be confident that your prayer is going to be answered. Your, your, the harvest is going to come. The healing will, will be manifested. Planting the word, his word in your heart, though, involves you meditating on it. And I, and I, you know, I don't know any quick way to make this happen. I don't, there's not shortcuts or, or um, my, you can't microwave this. It's just you get, in the, you get in the word. You can go back to the bookstore and buy my book. Scriptures to live by, or just get a Strong's Concordance and look up your own verses and, and meditate on it. And Lord, I'm looking for a verse that has my name on it, that speaks to my situation. And I'm, I'm, I, want, I want something that's quickened to me, and that faith then will rise up, guys, because you planted the Word in, in your heart. And, and I, just, I, I just know... I mean, this is almost something I didn't want to take the time to, to emphasize, but I feel like very strongly that the Lord's encouraging me to share this with you because there's some of you that have taken this for granted and you're skipping this step and then you're wondering why you don't get the harvest. Are you hearing me? You, you, it's just, there's, there's no shortcut for this. There wasn't for Barry. If you want to be assured that your healing harvest comes, then take the time to find healing scriptures or like, I, I mean, we just, we found, uh, we, we, we found three categories of scripture, healing, authority of the believer, and the integrity of God's word. And it was in, it, it was in the category, the scripture that healed Michael, was in the category of the integrity of God's word. So I don't care how you do it, but are you taking the time to make sure you've got the seed of God's word planted in your heart where you're meditating on it and you're getting it down in there and you're not digging it back up because you'll, you'll get a harvest. It's incorruptible seed. It, it's incorruptible seed. It's not gonna, if you plant it, it's gonna grow and it's, you're going to hatch off and be well. 
Are you hearing me? And this isn't theory with me, guys. I mean, this, this, is, this, this stuff really works. And so you got, you got to plant it in your heart by saying it, praying it, and then meditating on it and, and, and speak it in until you see yourself in it. The same way you would, you know, how many of you know how to worry? Anybody ever worry? Okay. I'm going to have an altar call for liars. How many of you have ever worried? Okay. How many of worry ever help? Now, worry doesn't help you, but you know what worry is? All you're doing is meditating on worst case scenario, on your fears, right? You, you begin to see yourself in that, in that scenario. Well, meditation is seeing yourself in, in the Word and seeing that working for you. Can you see yourself? If you can't, you need to meditate on that Word. Maybe you don't even have that Word. You know, you're generally believing a, a Scripture, but get one, man, that you become pregnant with. You need to get pregnant with the Word. And look at your neighbor and say, I know he's talking to you now. <laughs> and then, and then speak that word, but then, 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 once you know that you know what you know, and you know or this word, this scripture is for me, and I'm seeing myself in this, and God help me to see myself living in this, in this word, then, Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it'll be given you. Seek and you'll find, knock and it'll be open. You ask what you're sure about. That God's, God's quickened his word to you. you. You seek him about what you're not. Do not confuse your prayer life by asking for something you're not sure about. And how are you going to be sure? It's back to 1 John 5, 14 and 15. If you ask anything according to his will or his word. I, I, I have this confidence. He, he hears me. And if he hears me, it's a done deal. As long as I don't dig the seed of that word up. And I'll talk about that in, here in a minute. You ask for what you're sure about. Seek him about what you're not. And then, and then knock. Be persistent. What does that mean? You're not knocking on heaven's doors. You're knocking on closed doors to open up in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Knowing, knowing God's word related to your request, it's going to give you assurance that when you pray, you know, or when you say it, you're planting it in your heart. You're meditating on it until the promise becomes more real to you than the reality of your circumstances. The promise becomes more real to you than your pain, than the doctor's report, than whatever it is. Guys, it's, there's just no shortcuts to this. There's no shortcuts. Everybody say seed, seed. and then time. time. Now, this is the one that you don't like the most. <clears throat> Hebrews 6.12, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Everybody say faith, faith. and patience. Faith. Okay, 2 Peter 1, 5 and 6 says, add to your faith and then one of the things that you're to add to your faith is patience. Okay? Add to your faith patience. I think that's in verse 6. How many of you ever have a, a per perseverance there is, is patience? So how many of you ever gone uh, deep sea fishing or fishing for big, big bass? Okay? Uh, or maybe uh, northern pike up in Canada. Anybody ever gone... Fishing for, okay. So I like the analogy to faith to me is like, okay, once I, once I really get a revelation of the word, God's quickened something to me, okay, now that's like, that's when I hook the fish, right? I got that big fish, that big dream, that thing that, you know, you may be dealing with paralysis, you may be dealing with multiple sclerosis. You may be dealing with muscular dystrophy. You may be dealing with uh, ALS or something where it's it gets progressively worse. And so that's a, but, but how many of you know God's got healing for all of that? You may be dealing with dementia. God's got healing for all of that. Okay, but that's, that's a big fish because a big fish to fry, okay, a big fish to catch because 
the world says there's no cure for those things, okay, or stage four cancer or whatever it is. Well, I hooked a fish, okay, but now I've got to hold on to that fish and add, add patience to my faith and not give up. And I was doing, we were uh, fishing up in Canada with my brother several years ago, and we'd gone to this one area, and I looked down, and there was this, my, I was fishing on this side of the boat, my brother was on this side, and I looked down here, and there was this big log. But then the log started moving. And my brother had hooked him. But my brother was over here, and the, and the, and the fish log was over here, it was a big 20 pound pike, northern pike. Now they're not good eating, but they're sure, because they're real bony, but anyway. But he hooked that thing, but then he yanked that thing, he, he yanked it and it broke the line, because that thing was so big. And there's so many Christians that, that hook their harvest in faith, but then they try to reel it in, they try to bring it in the boat right away without, without exercising any patience. Are you hearing me? And, and look, I'd rather have healing right now, but I'm telling you, I know how to get healing in the boat. And you have to add patience to your faith, yes? And I know you don't like to talk about this, but it takes patience to bring a big fish in the boat, and it takes, it takes uh, and, and if you're impatient, you may break the line and lose a big fish. Impatience can hinder you reeling in the big dream, the big healing, or, or whatever the vision is for your life. Are you, hearing me? Are you hearing me? And too many times we give up too quickly because it doesn't happen overnight. And, you know, that's where I was when I had cancer. They... I had a big growth in my neck right here. It was like golf ball size or ping pong ball size. And I went to the doctor and, and, um, and he let out a four-letter expletive. And, and uh, you know, that, that's not good. And, and so, you know, I was, but I was praying and I was believing. And, and I went, that we had a healing line. Uh, this, this evangelist, I think he's gone home to be with the Lord, but his name was Jerry B. Walker. And he came to the... Um, to our church, and, and uh, now he had a lot of miracles. He, look, when evangelists start to teach, guys, you, you know, that's not their bailiwick. Okay, so don't, don't, don't swear off evangelists just because their doctrine's not perfect. Okay, anyway, so, it, it, but, so he, he, didn't ha he didn't have great, great doctrine, but man, we, there we, we saw miracles. Well, you know, he, he laid hands on me, and uh, of course, I was trying to deal with make a deal with God. Well, I'm really coming from my brother's salvation and trying to be noble, you know, and, and all this. But anyway, I didn't receive anything. So I believed in healing, but I thought it was, had to come instantly. And many people put all, the he, all their healing eggs in the instantaneous basket, right? And, and, but yet Jesus said in, in Matthew, I mean in Mark, he said that the last words that Mark records that, uh, that Jesus said, he said, they'll lay hands on the sick and they will what? Matthew, Ma Mark uh, 16, 18, the last words that Mark reco records that Jesus said, they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll what? What does recovery imply? Process. Okay, it doesn't, you know, what is he saying? Not everybody's going to get healed immediately. Look, even if you go to a doctor and take medicine, do, do, do you, does your body get healed immediately? Isn't it usually a process, a few days before you, before you start feeling better sometimes? And so, um, you know, and, and we don't like this word time, but this is, the, this is where people lose their healing many times is because they have their eyes on the calendar and the clock more than, more than on the Word of God. And so you get the seed planted in your heart. Okay, you got it planted. You got that Word, right? You're taking the time to get the Word. You plant it in your heart. You plant it by praying over it. You plant it by saying it. 
Okay, you plant, you plant it uh, by, by meditating on it. Now you got that word, it's planted, right? That's, that, is that word planted in your heart? But then what happens is after a period of time, it doesn't seem like it's working. Why, you come up for prayer, why, Daniel, why is it not working? Because you just, with your words, dug it up. How do you dig up your harvest? You dig it up the same way you plant it, with your words or your prayers. Please pray for me, it's just not working. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be you know, confession police here, but you know, we do need to be careful what we're saying. I believe I receive when I prayed or when I spoke it and I planted it, and every, anytime I think about it after that, I'm, I'm praising God for it, and I'm watering I'm watering that, and, and if I keep it in the ground, it's going to produce. Now, if, what would happen if a farmer went to dig up all of his seed because it didn't come up right away? Would he get a harvest? But then so many Christians are digging up their seed that they planted in their heart. Now, again, I know this is very elementary and very simple, and you, you probably all know this perfectly, but anyway... Just humor me, okay? No, you know that you don't know it perfectly or I wouldn't be preaching on this, right? And so Mark eleven twenty four, 24, uh, the, the verse that, uh, that Kenneth Hagin wrote, um, well, he quoted a lot, Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall, you shall, you shall have it as in the future tense, guys. You believe you receive it when you pray. You plant it in your heart. You hook the big fish, the big dream, the big vision, the big healing, and you shall have future tense. There's almost always time between the amen and the manifestation, right? And even when a farmer plants his seed, when, when is the har- he plants it in the spring. When's the, when is the harvest? In the fall. When a woman conceives seed, when is the harvest? Nine months. Okay? And my experience is the greater the harvest, the bigger the dream and vision, the more important it is to keep our eyes on God's Word, not the length of time. And look, I don't, you know, don't get me wrong. I want, I want things to come to pass more quickly, right? And, but I think if we'll, if we'll be um, good students of the Word and understand that we have to steward the time by praising God and not digging up our seed, the harvest will eventually come. The harvest for your healing is going to come. If you took the time to plant the seed, it's incorruptible. Then you've got to make sure you're not, you're not digging it up with your words. Well, why? How come things don't happen right away all the time? Well, you can look in... Uh, in fact, years ago, Dan, uh, Andrew came to our church and ministered along these lines about why is it that sometimes prayers are answered instantly and sometimes it takes longer? How many of you ever wondered that? And, and you can see it in Daniel chapter 9, um, verse 23. It says, at the beginning of your supplications, a commandment went out. And I've come to tell you. So the, in this, in Ch- Daniel chapter 9, the uh, God, it was instant. It was instant answer to prayer, but then Daniel chapter ten, verse twelve and thirteen. Then then he said to me, the angel said to him, "Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I've come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. Everybody say three weeks." Okay, there, there was resistance by the enemy. And many times that's what happens. There's resistance. But guys, look, uh, we're believers. And I've shared this many times before, but what do believers do? Believe. believe. And, 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 and if you, without faith, Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith it's impossible to please him, right? Okay, and then we're supposed to believe two things. Number one, he is. Number two, he's a rewarder. And you have no problem believing that he is, do you? You're a believer, right? 
You know how you got born again? You believe that God raises dead people, right? Okay, do you believe that? Okay, do you believe your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Do you believe that? Are you struggling believing that? Or do you believe you're going to heaven when you die? Okay, here's my question. Did you witness that event 2,000 years ago? And yet you still believe? Okay, did you, have, you, have you seen the book that your name's written in? Have you ever visited heaven? Have you, do you, have you been there? And yet you still believe. So you believe he is. Why are we struggling believing he's a rewarder? And how long, let me ask you this, for all of you clock watchers, You pray, well, you don't understand, Greg. It, I've, I've been standing for five years. Well, how long, you, how long are you going to believe that, that Jesus, God raised Jesus from the dead and, you, and your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you're going to heaven? How long are you going to believe? How long? Are you, are you, are you struggling with that? Pull, digging up that seed? Well, then why in the world... If you can believe he is, then why are you struggling digging up seed on the fact that he's a rewarder? And part of the reward is healing. Whatever seed you plant, that's a temporal reward that God wants you to have on the... Well, well, yeah, but you don't, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. God, when he comes back, he said, am I going to find faith? Uh, well, what, well what, happens if, what happens if I'm in stay in this condition, you know, until when Jesus comes? Well, at least you're in faith. What, do you, what, about, what are we going to do? Believers believe. And I'm going to get a hold of the word, and I'm going to get my eyes off of the clock and the calendar, and I'm going to thank God. And I'm, I'm going to let patience have its perfect work, and, and, and I'm going to praise God, and I'm going to... I'm going to Get my eyes on the Lord and, and stop digging the seed up. Amen. 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 Everybody say, I believe he is. Believe he is. And he's a, he's a rewarder. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. Do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance. After you've done the will of God, you'll receive the promise. Amen. Amen. He's encouraging us. Don't give up. Throw in the towel, no matter how long it's been. The question is, did you get this? Some, some people, they just put their faith in a prayer that was prayed for them. They don't take the time to get the seed in their heart. Okay? You get the seed of the word in your heart, and you hold on to that like a bulldog until Jesus comes back. And if it didn't manifest, well, it'll sure manifest there. And, I, and you can tell, tell the Lord, hey, I was, I was a believer all the way, Father. And he'll say, man, well done. You, you were believing. Did you know that some of the, some of the uh, heroes of faith in, in, in Hebrews 11, that they never saw the, the promise come to pass, yet they're, they're heroes of faith? I want to be one of those. And if, I, if I see something in the Word, I'm going for it. And, and I'm praising God. Now, certainly, I love the testimony part, but I'm going to hold on to the word until I see it manifest or until I see Jesus face to face. Because I'm a believer. Have you ever had a doubt after you believed? I just look at my doubt and I say, I doubt you doubt. Everybody say seed, seed. Time, time, harvest. That's the good part. Galatians 6, 9, and let us not grow weary while, while doing good, for in due season we'll reap. How many of you want to reap? What are we going to reap? Harvest. What kind of harvest? What kind of seed have you planted? What kind of seed? Are you hearing me? We will reap if we what? If we don't lose heart. If we don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Quit. This, this came from Bob Nichols. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. I'd hate to, have, I'd hate to be your towel as so many times as you've thrown it in. Don't give up. We're not, look, we are not, we, we are not those of those who, 
turn back. Look at, um, look, look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10 and, and verse, uh, let me see. Well, we read verse 36, verse 37, for yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. We are not of those who draw back. I'm not letting go of the word. I'm gonna stay in faith. But of those who believe to the saving of the soul. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hold on, guys. And, we, and we'll reap if we don't faint, if we don't give up. How many times have you been tempted to quit? John Osteen said, if I had a dollar for every time I was tempted to quit, I'd be a millionaire. Judas, Judas quit 53 days before the greatest, greatest revival the world's ever known. Don't quit, you're a believer, amen? So what can we do? I'm landing the plane now, what can we do while waiting on our harvest to manifest, what can we do? Well, water the seed that's been planted. Just water it. Thank God, how do you water it? Father, I just thank you for, that, for this word. I thank you that it's manifest in my mortal body. I thank you that, that resurrection life is manifesting and is, is driving out sickness and disease. And see yourself in that. Meditate on that. Praise God for that. Speak that. Amen. Water the seed that's been sown. Don't dig it up with stupid questions. Like, why isn't it working? You just dug it up with your words. Why isn't it? You're saying, you're declaring, the seed is not working. Just get your shovel, dig it up. Okay, now you got to plant it back in there. Are you hearing me? I'm no, no condemnation, guys. I'm just saying... Don't ask why it's working. You might ask, hey, is there anything, Lord, that you need me to do or want me to do to cooperate with the seed that's been planted? Show me. But if he doesn't show you anything, I mean, there could be unforgiveness or something, but if he doesn't show you anything, don't dig the seed up. Water it. Amen? Water it by meditating on it. Then, then thank him every day. And, and then, look, help somebody else you know, either reap their harvest or plant seed. Help them get seed planted in their heart so they can have their harvest. Amen? Amen. And, then, and then finally, Psalm 126, verse 5, says, we sow in tears. Those who sow in tears will reap in what? They'll reap in what? And then so people come to me and they're, they're wanting to know you know, um, it's been so long, Pastor Gay, it's been so long. It's been so... Look, and I, and I have compassion on you because you're in pain or, or whatever it is. But it's like, you know, they're, they, they're, they're not in a point to reap because they're still weeping. You, re you sow in tears, okay? It's, it's tough planting the word in your heart when you're seeing all the negatives and the pain and everything. But guys, you, you, you reap in joy. And, and how do you do that? I'm going to let the joy of the Lord uh, manifest in my life. And I'm going to praise God even when I don't feel like it. In joy, I'm going to start laughing. Ha ha, ho ho, he he, hoo hoo, ha ha, ho ho, he he, hoo ho, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha, ho ho, he he, ha ha, 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 Starting to flesh, man. And I'm going re to release joy because I'm, how did he say we would reap? Do you want to reap a harvest? Yes. It's joy, guys. It's praising God. Amen. Amen. And then get involved with somebody else. Praying for somebody else, helping them receive their harvest. And, and it will come to you. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I don't have time to go into all the detail, but in, in Genesis 15, um, Abram had just, he was really discouraged because God had given him a promise and, and it hadn't come to pass for 10 or 15 years. And, you know, and he had all this conflict and all these problems and problems with Lot and financial problems. And then he laid his wife's neck on the line to save his own. And, man, all, and he just was, 
He was disappointed in himself, not God. And he said, God, you know, I'm, I'm going to let El Eleazar be the heir, be my heir. And God said, come on, out, come on out here, boy. Get out from the press of all the stuff and get your eyes back on the stars because so shall your seed be. God's given him a vision of, what he, of the seed he planted in his heart. He said, Eleazar is not your heir but one that will come from your own, uh, from, from, from your own loins. And, and I'm telling you, God, what was he saying? He was saying, the deal is still on. No matter how many years of delay, no matter how much disappointment, disappointment in yourself, disappointment in, in others, you know, just delay of promise, get your eyes back on the promise, guys. And even if you did dig it up, just plant it again, that word will grow. Seed time, and you will see your harvest. Amen. So let's 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 lift our hands and thank Him for it. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the Word of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We praise you, Father. Why don't you stand up with me? Let's just worship Him. Let's praise Him, Father. We thank you. We thank you, Father. Come on, tell Him, Father. I thank you. I thank you for a revelation of Your Word. Just ask Him, Father. Give. Give me, if you don't have it, give me that revelation of your word, Father, and, I, and I'm going to plant it. And I want to praise you, Father. I'm going to praise you for the harvest of healing that's mine. I'm going to praise you, Father, that that healing belongs to me. The devil can't steal it from me. Father, you paid the price for it. And I'm, re I'm appropriating it in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you and praise you and thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him, guys. We rejoice, Lord. We rejoice, Lord. We rejoice, Lord. We laugh. You, he, he who is in the heavens laughs. Ha ha. Ho ho. He he. I'm laughing at you, devil. Ha ha. Ho ho. He he. Ha ha. Ho ho. He he. Ha 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 ha. Ho 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 ho. He he he. Ha 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 ha. Oh, we praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, guys, I'm not at all, I mean, I believe in prayer lines and I believe in calling the prayer line and having people agree with you. But today, as the prayer uh, people come forward, okay, all the prayer, prayer uh, team, would you guys come forward? As you come forward, when you come, when they come, when you come to have them pray with you, have them agree, tell them what you're standing on. And if you don't have a scripture, that's okay. Don't feel, God's not going to hold out on you. He'll give you one or two or three. He'll, he'll show it to you. And they're going to agree with you that you're going to get, you're going to get the incorruptible seed of his word planted in your heart. And you're going to hold on to that and you're going to water it and, and, and you're, you're going to help other people reap their harvest and you're going to be praising God and you're going to get your eyes off the calendar of the clock and you're going to come back. This test is going to turn out to a testimony. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. God, I'm, I'm praying and releasing the joy of the Lord in your life. I'm praying and releasing the joy of the Lord in your life in Jesus' name. That's what's hindering some of you from reaping. I'm speaking to some people right now. You have that word in your heart. You haven't dug it up, but you, you're not reaping because you're still, you're still uh, mourning over it not happening yet. You're grieving over it not happening yet. You're acting like it's dead. It's alive, and you need to start rejoicing like it's alive. And, and you need to go, you need to, you need to lighten up and go watch a funny movie <laughs> and, then, and then start praising God every day. God, help me release that joy that's in my heart. Did you know the Bible says that you and I are the light of the world? Did you know Jesus said that? You and I are the light of the world. And in Proverbs it says the light of the righteous rejoices. You know how you turn on your light? Is with your joy. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you guys, some of you are going to hatch off and get healed in manifestations coming just through your, your praise and your joy. 
in Jesus' name. Amen? And I'm releasing now, I'm releasing the joy of the Lord, 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 the joy of the Lord. I'm releasing the joy of the Lord in this place, in your life. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ho! Ha ho! He! Ha! Hey! Ho! He! Ha ha ha! Ho ho ho! Hey! Ho! Ha 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 ha! Praise God! Praise God! It's infectious, guys. It's infectious. It's infectious, and that's what God intends for you. Amen? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.